mention Colorado, any hunter automatically thinks of elk, mule deer, antelope. But this state has a strong population of the most sought after big game animal on this planet, the white-tailed deer. With the eastern part of Colorado holding some of the best deer hunting in our country, from agriculture to river bottoms, this countryside is what we call a sleeper when it comes to big buck action. On these river bottoms, the deer are forced to travel through small, narrow routes that allow the bow hunter to get close up and personal with these wary critters. Studying the wind, knowing the patterns and movement of the deer can put you in the right spot at the right time. Then all you have to do is draw, anchor, aim and release. The rest is up to you and the big guy upstairs. Now drawing a tag can sometimes be a bit tough, as I found out this past year, for once again the Vickster drew and I didn't. Ah well, maybe next year I just won't send in her application. This week on the Archer's Choice, well, we're back in southeastern Colorado, bull hunting river bottom whitetails. And well, <laughs> guess what happened? What? I drew a tag and Ralph didn't. Don't that just figure? Vicky draws, I don't. So guess what? I'm in the back paddling, filming, doing all the work and the way it should be. Keep paddling, Vicky. Just keep <laughs> paddling. <laughs> Ah. Yeah, well, uh, a rancher might have 40,000 plus acres of land, as well as, as we do, and, uh, but you only have about, we have five miles of river bottom that, that's huntable for whitetail. They all funnel down into this one area. Not all 40,000 plus acres would be huntable for whitetail. Uh, the rest of it might be huntable for mule deer or antelope. Out here in the west, we, we went through another drought. Another food source would be milo. Milo, in, in this case, the berries themselves is what the deer are after. Just as in the corn, you know, they'll come in and, and they'll, they'll rip that corn apart, and they really love that corn. In, in this case here, we see no berries. Now, either the birds have taken it and or the deer have come in and, and taken these berries out. These berries are high in protein, not as high as corn. Corn is the favorite fruit of the deer. They, they love that corn. Now, the milo is a secondary choice. Uh, alfalfa, hey is another good choice, high in protein, uh, and, and they tend to stick in the alfalfa fields a lot longer too. In the early season, we hunt from food plot to their bedding. Uh, we don't, we never bump them later than now. It, you know, it's a real quick hunt. They come in, they're gone. If we don't get them, we wake up the next day, we go ahead and do it again. Sometimes the only thing we'll do is we'll move tree stands from place to place, provided that you're seeing them in a different place. Probably one of the most important things, and that is scouting and glassing. You know, when you get to these river bottoms, a lot of times you can get to a high vantage point. And instead of going down there and busting up everything, leaving your scent and screwing up the area, get to a high vantage point. Maybe spend a day or two sitting there glassing, patterning these deer from their bedding to their feeding, and so, you know, back and forth. This way, instead of going down there, contaminating the area, sit up to a high vantage point, learn, learn their patterns, their movements, and that's going to make you more successful getting down in those river bottoms, putting your stand in the right place, and being there at the right time. In eastern Colorado, we're hunting river bottoms. We have cottonwoods and the tamarack. So you have to use your imagination setting tree stands in these cottonwoods. These old gnarly cottonwoods are pretty twisted up. 
So we'll find some groves of cottonwoods, good trails, good crossing trails that are both going down the river bottom and coming across to both food sources. And usually that's a good place and we've killed some pretty good bucks on there. Out here in the plains of southeastern Colorado, alfalfa, or hay, is another source of food for the deer. It's high in protein, runs 21% or so. The mule deer <clears throat> will tend to come in off the sand hills and come on into the hay fields for high protein food. And as we're along the river, uh, they tend to come out of, out of the wooded area or out of our, our uh, cottonwoods and tamaracks to graze on the alfalfa hay.
of things of southeastern Colorado and the river bottoms is the buck to doe ratio is really close, almost one to one. So that means late season hunting, you're gonna have a lot of busted racks. This past fall, we were able to go back in early October before anything got busted up and I was able to take a beautiful buck. When I saw these little bucks that were with that larger buck out in the field start coming back around behind us, I thought, man, I hope that big buck is with him. And he was, and he came out, and he came around, and he came right underneath us. And there was nothing I could do. I couldn't take a shot. He didn't present a shot. And then, all of a sudden, the two other little bucks start spawning, and that bigger buck, he went and ran around the tamaracks. I knew he was at about 25 yards, and I threw my bow back, and I shot, and I wasn't, I guess I wasn't paying well enough attention to those couple of branches sticking up, and I missed. Well, he went running off, and, let me tell you, I got so excited when I saw him coming in, and then I shot, and I missed, and I thought, how could I have done that? That is just, I mean, you're, my adrenaline was pumping so high, and all of a sudden, it just like exploded. It was gone. It, was, it just deleted. It, it had nothing to do with me anymore. It left. There was nothing more I could do. And as I sat there, and I thought, I can't believe that just happened to me. And I sat there, and I looked at that bigger bucket. He ran 40 yards and stopped, and I'm watching him, and wouldn't you know it, he came back in. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. And now, it's my turn. The whole reason why we went to Colorado was for my deer tag that Ralph didn't get this year. Check this out. Are you okay back there? I ain't doing nothing. Are you having fun? I quit. Oh. When it comes to bow hunting whitetails, one of my favorite places to go is Colorado. And I was fortunate enough to draw a tag last fall. Now, when we're hunting near Lamar, you were talking river bottom whitetails and big bucks. The buck to doe ratio is so close, one to one. I mean, they're always spawning, they're always fighting. And if you wait too late to get out there, they're all busted up.
<laughs> oh my, he's got rubs on his head there. Oh, he is beautiful. Look at this dude. Oh, he's, he's got a darker rack. Oh. What a deer, Vic. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> to keep your composure after having a second shot, and, and honestly, Ralph, I really do hope that this year you do draw a tag. Well, thank you, Vicky. I mean that. I really. Thanks a lot, because I, just I so do. you know, <laughs> we, we, we didn't send in your application. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, remember, come back next week, same time. Same station. Right here on, on the Archer's Choice. Choice.